Hey everybody, welcome back to another Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, waiting for that little thing to happen there. I just like that <laughs> when it pops up like that. It makes me feel important. I know I'm not, but it makes me feel good. Anyway, welcome. This is Photoshop User TV, and I'm joined by the impeccable RC Concepcion. What's going on? How you guys doing? What's going on, Pete? Yeah, how are you doing? It's been a while since I've been on the you've set. Been, you've been busy. That's because you got another show you, you host after this one. That's right. Photography Tips and Tricks. So that keeps me pretty much busy on that set all the time. But I always keep looking over here wistfully, and I'm just <laughs> like, I got to get it. I got to go on one day. One day they're going to let me on the show. Well, we're excited to have you here. We can't forget to mention that this is brought to you by Kelby One, the fine makers of this magazine right here. Uh, Photoshop User Magazine. I like Great that cover. magazine, great cover. Uh, we've got uh, some incredible articles in there by Corey, myself, RC's got some stuff in there. Yeah. We've got all kinds of stuff in there. You need to make sure you check it out. Go to kelbyone.com to find out all the good I stuff love in there. It. It's some a beautiful magazine. Stuff. Speaking of beautiful, how about a beautiful tip? <laughs> That's a wonderful. How about that segue? That's a great <laughs> segue. That's pretty good. I, it's, I had something very, very quick. What I wanted to do is I wanted to sh talk with you guys about how to work with RAW files and RAW file processing. When you're working with images inside of Photoshop, a lot of the times people will use things like levels and curves to kind of push images around. But what you don't keep in mind is that you could be doing some damage to these files. And it's probably a good idea for you to be careful and work with the source files as best you can. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go inside of Photoshop. I'm gonna click on File, Open, and I'm just, I have one file over here called Mountain. All right, I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna open this up, and I'll show you, right now it's, it's kind of a little, you know, flat, right? So one section of it is in complete darkness, and then we have a really beautiful sky in this one section. Now, it would be something that you would want to work with, either shadows or highlights, to be able to kind of bring most of this information up, but there are times when you just have this file and you want to bring this file into Photoshop to do some work. So what I would do instead here is, I would, instead of using open image in this one section, I would use open object, right? Hold on your shift key. When you hold on your shift key, it'll switch to open object. Clicking on the open object section, that will turn this into an actual smart object. The good part about this is that now I can go back into this file. I can make a duplicate smart object if I need it, and I'm pushing and pulling information that sits of a raw nature. The moment that you open up a file inside of Photoshop and it's a JPEG, any pushing and pulling you're, you're gonna have, you're gonna introduce things like noise, you're gonna introduce uh, color artifacting, so you don't necessarily want that. It's an easy trick. All you have to do at this point is come into this one section here where it says shadows, do a right click, and I'm gonna select new smart object via copy. This will make a second smart object. With that smart object, I'll go ahead and I'll double click on this. And now let's just say that I wanna pull in some of this exposure. I can get and do that. Now I've got some information here. I'll even go in and I'll add a little bit of vibrance in this one section. I'll click okay. So now I have one smart object with foreground and one smart object with a background. All I have to do at this point is just option click with this one mask, and then using a brush with a relatively low flow, I can go back into this one section here, and I can paint in just the information that I want. The beautiful part about all of this is that because you're pushing and pulling on raw base data, you have a little bit more latitude than you normally would have if you were working with this as pixel based data. So keeping your raw file, as intact as you can and then moving up and down within that is always a great push when you're trying to get portions of the best of the image inside of one composited spot. Yeah, that I really like that idea. Now my question is if you hadn't done like the, the one below, if you hadn't copied uh, what was the drop down menu that you said copy via merge? No. Oh yeah, if you hold on the shift key. Yeah, so if you, if you went into the file itself, let's say that we went to open up this one file, uh -huh. right? And you see where it says open image? Right. If I click on this, then it'll open up the image and it just opens up the image. And, as a and then you start pushing those, those permanent pixels around mm -hmm. and that's where you can get in trouble. Ar artifacting and right. noise and things right. like that. So when in doubt, always use smart objects, always use the raw file, you're gonna be good to go. Because we tend to get a little nervous about smart objects or whatever, but the payoff is going to be worth it to play with that. That's absolutely. a great tip. That's absolutely. a great tip. Absolutely. Why don't we do this? Why don't we take a quick break? When we come back, you've got a little bit of drawings that you want to be able to share well, yourself. Yeah, we're going to tease something out for you. All right, stick around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody. Photoshop User TV RC here with Miss B. Collins. Yeah. Now, before we continue, it's important to be able to tell you, make sure that you're considering Photoshop World. Go to photoshopworld.com. This is a conference that we do twice a year, and this time around, it's in Vegas, baby. So September 3rd through the 5th, 2014, you're gonna learn from some of the world's best instructors. This is the place for you to be able to go now, you can also take a look at pre-con highlights on our YouTube channel, but this is the must-see event. If you're into photography and you're into Photoshop, this is a place you're going to want to be. Now, Pete, you have a tutorial on using a little bit of a type of a blur. Yep. I don't want to give it away. Yep, no. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, if we look at... I'm actually going to tease, you know, because it's all about teasing, but I'm going to talk to you about how to create some of these effects uh, next show, so you make sure you come back, but this is a little tease for what's going to happen next show. Oh, okay. Uh huh. You like how I did that? I'm learning I like how it. to do it. But here's the thing. I went out and took some photos with my daughter the other day, and I wanted, I, I like the look of this. I'm using uh, as shallow depth of field as I can get, but there's sometimes that you want to create a little bit more of a... Uh, a softer look or maybe even have it look more like you've taken it with an, an older camera or something like that. And most people don't realize the power of the blur gallery. Uh, and what you can do is you can come in here and we understand iris blur and tilt shift probably fairly well, but I want to show you the power of field blur. Okay. When I first started playing with this, it's like, okay, I've got this thing. Well, this is just basically Gaussian blur with a little dialer. Okay. And I was like, wow, hmm, that's great. Let me go play with iris blur and tilt shift. But once I've figured out that I can place multiple blur, field blurs, no, I don't want to do that. I want to set one at zero. I basically want to keep her face without getting blurred. But right. now I can come in, my, my cursor automatically changes, has a little plus sign. I can start adding different little sections and different field blur points. Let me zoom out just a little bit more. And what I can start to do is place these dots of blur around here, and they're going to bounce off. Basically, they're going to try to blur up into the point where they bounce off another field blur dot. Oh, okay. So what's happening is I'm going to come in now. Because I've got her face and this area of this blur is being covered by that dot, what if I come over here and I take this and really crank the blur down on that? You see how it's affecting this area? I can do the same thing here. But this dot is affecting the blur coming over to her. So what, in essence, I can do is I can start to dial up how much blur I want in different pockets of the picture. It's like normally if I came in here, I'd want to adjust anything like fix her skin where she's got some, she's my daughter, so obviously she's got bruises and stuff from being a monkey like her dad. Well, instead of having to go in there and fix her skin, what if I just blur this area? And maybe I want to have it a little bit different feel here and different feel there. It's all about dialing it here, or I could do it right there. But in no time at all, just a couple quick dots, I can dial up the look of this. And right. so once I get done, I just simply hit enter and let it chew on it for a second. And let me show you the before and after. So it's almost kind of like taking, it's almost kind of like taking a layer, doing different types of blurs on it, then masking it out. But instead, you're doing it in one pass. Yeah, you, you don't have to do any masking or whatever. You just have to understand that every dot I put is going to have an expansion to it from that center out. And as soon as I put one here, it's going to expand out here, and it almost creates blur bubbles. Nice. And so you can decide how much blur you want in that blur bubble, how much you want to stay clear just by dialing up or down. Like I use that one center one on her face to protect her face from getting blurred. Right, it kind of right. like pushed all the blur out there. Right. And so real quickly, you can come in, you add a little bit of a vignette at the end, but here's the, there's the before and there's the after. Let me zoom in and you can see how I, you can easily start to kind of reproduce a, uh, an old Lomo Mm -hmm. uh, type kind of, of like camera or whatever, using the old plastic lenses or whatever. There's going to be parts that are going to be in focus, parts that are not going to be in focus. But you see, you can really shape the way that image is going to come out and give it that even extra soft focus that you couldn't even accomplish in the camera. I like and it. so I love using field blur, especially when I want to give it just a little extra touch, kind of my own signature blur feel to it. I like it. Very, very cool. Thanks so much, Pete. Yep. yep. Hey, listen. Uh, we also have a PeachBit ebook deal we want you to take a look at. Make sure that you go to peachbit.com slash Kelby1.
you go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1, you are going to get 40% off of this ebook deal. All right? You're not going to want to miss it. It's 40% off. All you got to do is go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1, enter in the promo code Kelby1. Now, we do have a contest giveaway. We're going to give away, so one of you guys is going to win a ticket and you're going to be winning a Photoshop World ticket. So not only will you get a ticket to a seminar, we're also gonna give away a ticket to Photoshop World itself. You have something else and, you wanna give away. Yeah, this is a book that Scott came across. It's called Critique Inside the Minds of 23 Leaders in Design. And it's a great book that it, this uh, person started with a poster project and then went to all these different designers to see how they would change the design. And it's a great book for getting inside the heads of different designers and seeing how everyone kind of looks at things differently. So it's called Critiqued. Nice. And uh, it is by Christina Beard. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to our website. All right. So we're going to go to kelby1.com slash contest. It's going to bring you to this one section here. Just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Make sure that you select the show that you want. In this case, we're dealing with Photoshop User TV. Put in your name. Put in your email. Tell us something about the show. Tell us something you want to see. These are your shows. So one of you guys will be able to win all of this stuff. So I'm excited to be here, dude. Yep. I was so happy you're to back. come. You're back. We're, hey, we love to have you here. Hey, I'm going to try to get here as much as I can. And now you got to get me over on Photoshop. I know. Um, I know you're going to get over there as well. We're, we're going over there in a little while, so make sure you come over there and check us out. Nice. Thing. Well, that's it. Can you believe this is show number 381? You've been in about 300 it's, of them, haven't it's you? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. But long thank time. you so much for joining us. We are going to be back here next week, so make sure you check us out. Kelby1.com. Thank you much. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.